welcome back this is lecture number 46 and today we will continue with eigenvalues and eigenvectors another very important uh, topic in linear algebra. So, we will go through the introduction of uh, these eigenvalues and eigenvectors and uh, also their geometrical interpretation and then uh, some simple examples to evaluate eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, here what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix? Here let us consider this simple matrix here A, a 2 by 2 matrix given by this 3 minus 2 1 0 and then we consider these two vectors one is this u which is uh, minus 1 0 and another one uh, is v which is uh, 2 1 and with this if we uh, compute this product here a and u. So, here we have this a and then we have this u. So, this product will be a minus 3 and then minus uh, 2 that will give minus 5 and then here minus 1. So, the second component will be minus 1. So, we have this uh, result uh, minus 5 minus 1, but if we do this product with this vector v then what will happen? So, a times uh, v now. So, a and this is v here 2 1 then what we will get. So, this is 6 and minus 2 4 and then here we will get 2. So, now this result of this product is 4 uh, 2. What is interesting here now this 4 2 is nothing but the 2 times of the vector here uh, 2 1. So, what we observe now that this a uh, times v in this case is this 2 times v. So, this product here is still giving us v, but it is just the 2 times here one number uh, has come in front of this v. So, this length of this uh, vector which was v here after multiplication this has increased uh, this has got double now. So, that is exactly the point which uh, uh, will take us to this uh, introduction to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, if you look at this geometrically what is happening. So, here we have uh, this x axis and y axis. So, this vector v the vector v which is uh, given here is, is exactly this one and then the a v after this product it is just the 2 times. So, that is the vector uh, this uh, with length uh, double of this length of this v. So, we have this vector a v. What is interesting that this a v and v they have the same direction and their magnitudes are different. So, here now it is just the double of this uh, earlier vector v after the multiplication, but in this case of this u vector this was the vector u and this a times uh, u has become this one. So, we do not have uh, such relation that after multiplication the vector uh, direction remains the same. We have a completely different vector now a u. So, our interest is not exactly these uh, u with this a our interest is for such vectors whose multiplication with that matrix does not change its direction it is a parallel to the original um, vector v and that is what we are looking for and these are called actually the eigenvectors and this number which has come here that will be called as eigenvalues. So, that is the topic of today's lecture and we will uh, go a little more into the detail now about these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, the definition the mathematical uh, formal definition here let a be uh, any uh, square matrix the entries can be real or the entries of the matrix a can be complex. A scalar lambda is called eigenvalue uh, of a if there exist a non zero vector yeah that is also important here this uh, non zero vector if uh, there exists a non zero vector uh, such that such that this a x is equal to lambda x. So, exactly it is a parallel to what we have just seen in previous example. So, if we have such a vector x whose multiplication with this given matrix a, a x is nothing but the lambda time uh, x and this lambda is some scalar uh, some some real number or, or a complex number. 
So, here this A x is equal to lambda x that is a very important equation which we will be talking about today. So, that is the definition now of this eigenvector this x is called uh, the eigenvector and this uh, lambda is called the eigenvalue. So, this is the eigenvector and this has to be always uh, non-zero otherwise the zero will be satisfied always. So, we are looking for the non-zero uh, vector here which is called the eigenvector and this is called the eigenvalue. Okay, so, now the vector x is the eigenvector associated with this uh, eigenvalue lambda and the two important points now the geometrically which we have already seen with the help of uh, earlier example that an eigenvector of a matrix A is a non-zero vector uh, x in this R n such that the vectors here x and this A x are parallel. This is what we have seen in previous example that this vector v and the vector a v they were just the parallel the length was different. So, here also uh, the geometrical uh, meaning of this eigenvalues eigenvector in general is that this uh, vector this x and this A x both are parallel and their magnitude will change and therefore, we have this uh, eigenvalue lambda. Algebraically uh, an eigenvector x is a non-trivial solution because we are looking for uh, the eigenvector x which is non-zero. So, meaning this non-trivial solution because x is equal to 0 will always satisfy this equation. So, we are not interested in the 0 solution we our interest is in in uh, non-zero solution meaning the non-trivial solution of this equation A x is equal to lambda x or this eigenvector uh, x here is a non-zero vector in the null space of this A minus lambda i because this equation which we have A is equal to L A x is equal to lambda x. So, this A x is equal to uh, lambda x what we can do we can bring this lambda x term to the left hand side. So, we have A minus this lambda with the identity matrix because we need to subtract from this A then we have to also introduce this identity matrix and then x is equal to 0. So, basically what we are looking for we are looking for the non trivial solution this x of this equation A minus lambda i or rather the system of linear equations A minus lambda i x is equal to 0 and this is exactly the definition of the of the uh, null space of this a minus lambda i. So, here the matrix is a minus lambda i and if we look for the null space of this a minus lambda i. So, this x vector which we are looking for is in the uh, null space of this matrix a minus lambda i. And since it is a non-zero I mean uh, the null space also has a, no, uh, has a 0 vector, but we are looking for the non-zero vector in the in the null space of this. So, x is a non-zero vector in the null space of this a minus lambda i. Now, the natural question is this how to compute this eigenvector and how to compute uh, the eigenvalues associated with this uh, with a matrix of order n. So, how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors we will discuss now. So, consider this equation a minus lambda i x is equal to 0 that is a x is equal to this lambda x equation written in this form. And there are two unknowns here the unknowns are the lambda we need to compute lambda and also we need to compute x. There is a one equation here a minus lambda i x is equal to 0 or it is a system of linear equation and we have these two unknowns the lambda and x. So, how to compute these two unknowns uh, so that those unknowns satisfy this equation a minus lambda i x is equal to 0. The lambda is a scalar and this x is a vector uh, whose components will be exactly equal to this n if uh, the matrix A is n cross n matrix. So, what is uh, other information we have that we are looking for this non trivial solution x. So, this equation a minus lambda i x has a non trivial solution which we have already studied in previous lecture if and only if this satisfy the equation which equation that the determinant of this a minus lambda i if this determinant is 0 
then we will have a non trivial solution if the determinant is not equal to 0 then there will be a unique solution and that will be the trivial solution meaning this x will be 0 but we are looking for a non trivial solution of this equation a minus lambda i x is equal to 0 and in that case we have this condition that this determinant of this a minus lambda i matrix this must be 0. So, we got another condition which is leading us to at least uh, get now uh, something out of this condition determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to 0. So, when we expand this determinant because this lambda is the unknown now a is a given matrix and i is the identity matrix. So, here this lambda is unknown. So, when we uh, expand this determinant, determinant is nothing but uh, this polynomial uh, equation the c 0 uh, lambda power n plus c 1 lambda power n minus 1 and so on c n these are the coefficients and they will be uh, naturally uh, the given when this a is given. So, we have this polynomial equation and then if we solve this equation we will get uh, at most these n roots of uh, uh, n, n roots of this equation that means the n values of the lambdas they may be distinct and they may not be distinct they may be real they may not be real so whatever so the solution of this equation which is called uh, the characteristic equation so this equation is called uh, characteristic characteristic equation of of the matrix A and after solving this equation we can get uh, the possible lambdas. Once we have the lambda here then we have this equation A minus lambda i uh, x is equal to 0 and for each lambda we can find the solution of this A minus lambda i x is equal to 0 and note that our lambda which we will get uh, with this condition that the determinant is 0. So, naturally we will get non trivial solution of this A minus lambda i x is equal to 0 because the trivial solution will come when this determinant is not equal to 0, but we have uh, we will get our lambda such that this determinant A minus lambda i will become 0 and therefore, uh, automatically for these lambdas we will get the non trivial solution of these a minus lambda i x is equal to 0. So, here the roots of this characteristic equation are exactly called the Eigen values because this lambda is the Eigen value. So, once we solve this characteristic equation we will get all the Eigen values and the Eigen vectors of a can be determined by this solving the homogeneous uh, system of this linear equation that means, this a minus this lambda i uh, x is equal to 0. So, we need to solve again the system of linear equations. So, from the beginning of this lectures uh, in linear algebra I am emphasizing again and again on this system of linear equation because at each and every step finally, we are solving uh, the system of linear equations. So, it is very important now and here for each value of this lambda we need to solve uh, the system of equation. So, if we have three distinct lambdas for example, so for each lambda, so for uh, three times we have to solve the system of uh, linear equations and they will be different equations because we have the different lambda. So, this matrix is going to be different and we will get different uh, eigenvectors. So, we will be talking more on, on this now. And this null space of this uh, a minus lambda i. So, the null space means these x I and which includes the 0 also because the null space will also include the 0. So, the null space here called the Eigen space of a corresponding to Eigen value lambda. So, what is in the null space? The null space carries all the Eigen vectors plus the 0 vector because the 0 is not the Eigen vector. So, here in the null space which is also called the Eigen space it contains all Eigen vectors including 0 uh, vector because 0 is, is, is naturally the solution of this uh, a minus lambda i x is equal to 0 or 0 will be there in the null space, but 0 we do, is not the Eigen vector because the Eigen vector we define as the non 0 non 0 x the non trivial solution of this equation. So, another terminology here which we uh, may use later that is Eigen space. So, Eigen space is nothing but the set of all these Eigen vectors uh, including the 0 vector. 
Okay, so let us uh, go through the problem here. The problem number 1, it is uh, find the eigenvalues and uh, the eigenvectors of this matrix A is equal to 2, 1, 4 and minus 2. At a very simple uh, example, we start with the evaluation of these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, here first we have to write down the characteristic equation and we need to solve the characteristic equation always to find the uh, eigenvalues and then for each, uh, each uh, characteristic value or each eigenvalue we have to uh, solve that system of equation that uh, uh, we will uh, get in that way the eigenvectors. So, here the characteristic equation is the determinant of this a minus lambda i. So, a minus lambda i that means, so the eigenvalues are nothing but the but the this uh, solution of this characteristic equation. So, we have uh, this a minus lambda i. So, a here 1, uh, 2, 1 and this 4 and minus 1 and then we have uh, this lambda i that will be the determinant at the end. So, lambda i means the lambda 0, 0 and the lambda that is the, the product of lambda and this identity matrix and this we want to solve now the determinant here. So, what is the matrix? The matrix here is 2 minus lambda and then we have here 1 and here we have 4 and then minus 1 and the minus lambda that is the determinant here which we can directly always uh, we can write, write down for this given matrix A. So, the A was given this 2 1 and 4 uh, minus 1. So, how to write the characteristic equation just the determinant of this matrix uh, subtracting lambda from the diagonal. So, 1 minus lambda i. So, lambda from the diagonal here uh, we will get this 2 minus lambda and minus 1 minus lambda is equal to 0. And now, the determinant value here this product. So, which will be 2 minus lambda and multiplied by this minus 1 minus lambda and this is minus 4 here is equal to 0. So, we can get this this product that will give minus 2 and then here uh, minus 2 lambda or uh, this plus lambda and plus lambda square and then we have minus 4 is equal to 0. So, we get this minus 6 here this and this then we have this lambda square and then we have uh, minus lambda. So, this is the characteristic equation uh, which we can factorize here easily and that is mi lambda minus 3 and, and this lambda uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. So, that is the characteristic equation from there we can get uh, the roots of the equation. So, that is what given here the lambda minus 1 and lambda uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. So, that is our characteristic equation here and its roots that will be the eigenvalues. So, our eigenvalues are uh, the one eigenvalue here which we are calling lambda 1 that is uh, 3 because this is the solution of this equation and the another eigenvalue will be lambda 2 which is minus 2. And the eigenvector now corresponding to each here. So, first let us take this lambda 1 is equal to 3. So, while taking this we have to now form the system of equation a minus uh, lambda uh, i and times this x here. So, that will be the system of equation. So, we have to subtract this 3 from the diagonal entries and that will be our matrix here. Meaning, so if we do so, so here a minus uh, 3 i. So, a was 2 here. So, if we subtract 3 from the diagonal entries, we will get minus 1 here 1 and here 4 and this is minus 1 and then uh, minus 1. So, uh, minus 3. So, this will be minus 4 and then we have these x 1 x 2 4 x it has 2 component and the right hand side is the 0 vector this one. So, we have this uh, system of equation which we uh, need to solve uh, to get the eigenvector corresponding to this uh, lambda 1 is equal to 3 and this is uh, simple because our this matrix here which uh, I am again calling this A. So, so this is the uh, matrix which we can easily get to the reduced uh, echelon form. So, rho reduced echelon form for this matrix uh, will be uh, minus 1 and this 1 and here we can multiply by 4 and add it to this equation. So, that will give 0 0 and that is the, the rho reduced echelon form of this matrix from where we can 
easily identify the solution. So, here this is our pivot element the first one minus 1 and here we have the 0 rows. So, naturally we will get uh, a non trivial solution because uh, the lambdas were obtained with that condition that we will get a non trivial solution meaning always we will get uh, for solving such system some uh, uh, free variables. So, here for instance this x 2 we can call as free variable. So, this x 2 is a free variable we can choose a value whatever value we like. So, if we choose x 2 1 then this equation will give us so minus x 1 uh, plus x 2 is equal to 0 that is the equation here and if we choose x 2 is equal to 1. So, x 1 will be also 1. So, one solution of this and there are infinitely many possibilities of the solutions. So, here the one possibility of the solution is that x 1 is 1 and x 2 is also 1. So, that is the solution what we get out of this uh, that is a one solution any multiple of this. So, we can have 2 2 or any uh, number we can multiply to this one that will be uh, the solution of this equation meaning the eigenvector. So, eigenvector is, is never unique here uh, corresponding to this lambda 1 is equal to 3 we got this uh, vector 1 1 uh, 1 vector that is uh, uh, also need to be mentioned because uh, the, the 2 2 will be also the solution and that will be also the eigenvector. So, any multiple of this will be the eigenvector because that is the solution of this and this is the kind of generator of the solution or the basis of the null space of uh, of, of this uh, a minus 3 i uh, matrix. So, that is the basis here for this uh, null space of this a minus 3 i and that is the vector here x which we call the eigenvector. So, same uh, similar steps we have to repeat now for lambda 2 is equal to uh, minus 2 and uh, maybe I can skip that. So, here we have this a plus 2 i now. So, this 2 will be added now to the to the diagonal entry. So, we will have a plus 2 i will be this 4 1 and 4 minus 1 as the matrix and from there we can get as again one vector here 1 minus 4, but any multiple of this will be also the eigenvector. So, by solving this equation a plus 2 i is equal uh, x is equal to 0, we got the another vector here which is 1 and minus 4. Uh, what is also interesting and we will uh, note it down later on that there were two different eigen values here 3 and minus 2 and their eigen vectors here is 1 1 or any multiple of this 1 and 1 4. What we can also check uh, and we can indeed easily see here in case of these two vectors that these two are linearly uh, independent vectors. Uh, we cannot get like lambda 1 times this uh, 1 1 and then lambda 2 uh, times this 1 minus 4. If you want to set this linear combination to 0, the only solution will be that lambda 1 is 0 and lambda 2 is 0. There is no other possibility here. So, these uh, vectors 1 1 and 1 minus 4, uh, they are linearly independent vectors and later on in the in theoretical uh, result also we will see that whenever we have two different uh, or n different eigenvalues then corresponding uh, the eigenvectors will be linearly independent that we can theoretically prove or uh, we will prove actually in, in, in future uh, lectures. So, here these are the two eigenvectors which we have easily evaluated corresponding to each of the eigenvalues. So, another example here find the eigenvalues and these eigenvectors of uh, A uh, which is given here again a very simple matrix we have taken just for demonstration 1 1 and 0 uh, minus 1. So, if we write down the characteristic equation so that will be A minus this lambda i is equal to 0. So, that means we will subtract here um, from the diagonal entries uh, lambda. So, that will be uh, that will be a uh, 1 minus lambda 1 0 and this 1 minus lambda is equal to 0. So, which the product here 1 minus lambda square uh, is the characteristic equation and uh, their roots will be then uh, lambda 1. So, here the characteristic equation is coming 1 minus lambda uh, whole square is equal to 0. So, there are two roots of the characteristic equation 
and these two roots are the lambda 1 is equal to 1 and lambda 1 2 also 1. So, it is a repeated root the case of the repeated root we have only this one eigenvalue which is repeated two times and now corresponding to this eigenvalue we need to compute the eigenvector. So, the eigenvector corresponding to uh, corresponding to these uh, values here 1 1 we can again uh, form the system of linear equation that is uh, a minus this uh, 1 lambda times 1. So, lambda is 1 here. So, a minus 1 x is equal to 0. So, this system of equation we have to solve now and what is this system now a minus 1. So, so here 1 will be uh, subtracted from the diagonal entries and we what we will get. So, let me just first uh, Mm. see here. So, our matrix will be uh, now the 0 and 1 and 0 and then here also this 0 that is our system of equation x 1 x 2 and is equal to this 0 0 the right hand side vector. So, this is the row reduced echelon form already and we have here this uh, pivot element that means this uh, x 2 is not a free variable, but here this x 1 because the first a uh, column uh, does not have a pivot element. So, this is what we call the free variable and this free variable we can assign any value we like. So, this x 1 we are assigning some, some alpha for instance and this x 2 equation that is already uh, uh, given from the first equation that x 2 is 0. So, we do not have even dependency on this alpha the x 2 is always 0 whatever alpha we take that is the, the freedom we have now. So, our solution of this uh, uh, system of equation is x 1 and x 2 uh, this alpha and this 1 0. So, any alpha we can we can choose of course, here and that is the solution. So, this 1 0 is the is the uh, is the generator here for the solution and now th that is what we have this 1 0 is, is one of the is one of the eigenvectors corresponding to one and any multiple of this will be also the eigenvector. So, here we have seen there were two uh, different eigenvalues, but we get only one eigenvector. So, that is also possible which, uh, which can be uh, seen here with the help of this simple, simple example. More on this we will be talking about uh, later that what are the possibilities corresponding to one this um, eigenvalues, how many eigenvectors are possible and so on. So, there is a Kelly Hamilton theorem which uh, which says that every square matrix satisfy its own characteristic equation that is another uh, uh, result which directly coming from the characteristic equation that every square matrix satisfy its own characteristic equation. So, we know what is the characteristic equation that is the determinant of this a minus lambda i meaning this such a polynomial equation uh, is the characteristic equation and this result says which we will not go through the proof that this uh, this uh, matrix itself will satisfy this characteristic equation that means if instead of the lambda if we replace this by a so here a power n a power n minus 1 and then this uh, and so on up to cn uh, this will be in that case cn into i i will be the identity matrix of the same size so that this Kelly Hamilton theorem says that every square matrix also satisfies uh, its characteristic equation and that means that the a will also satisfy this equation. So, it is just the lambda is replaced by this a here and with this c n uh, to make it consistent because now we are working with the matrices. So, there should be a matrix here of the same order. So, that is the, the result of the Kelly Hamilton theorem which we can verify for instance for this very simple example which we have taken 11 minus 6 i 4 i n 1 and we will verify this characteristic uh, polynomial uh, by this or the Kelly Hamilton theorem. So, the characteristic polynomial characteristic equation we have to write corresponding to this a which will be just by subtracting uh, this lambda from the diagonal entries and now we can uh, write down in terms of this uh, I mean this uh, determinant here. So, that we will get this equation lambda square and minus 12 lambda uh, minus 13 that is just the product of 11 minus lambda to 1 minus lambda and then the minus minus plus here uh, 24 i square. So, again minus 24. So, that 
uh, we can uh, simplify we will get this equation lambda square minus 12 lambda minus 13. And now, what we will see the Kelly Hamilton theorem says that this a square minus 12 a minus 13 i this uh, should be uh, just uh, 0. So, this should satisfy the, the characteristic equation and if we compute this a square that is coming to be here. So, the multi uh, the product of this a with the matrix a that will be coming this one here minus this 12 times uh, the a so 12 is multiplied to each of the entry of the a and then we have minus 13 i here. So, when we uh, when we determine this one, so here this minus so these two will be added and that this will be subtracted we are getting actually 0 matrix and that is what the characteristic equation uh, this uh, Kelly Hamilton theorem says that uh, every square matrix satisfies its characteristic equation. So, we have just replaced here lambda by this a and then we have seen that this right side instead of the 0 we got the 0 matrix. So, that is what the Kelly Hamilton theorem is. Another use of this Kelly Hamilton theorem we can quickly look from this example we can use this Kelly Hamilton theorem to prove this a inverse. So, again very simple example we have started with this a is equal to 2 4 and 3 5. So, if we write down its characteristic equation, so again this lambda is subtracted from the diagonal and we can simplify this uh, uh, determinant. So, we will get this lambda square minus 7 lambda minus 2 is equal to 0 that will be the characteristic equation and by Kelly Hamilton theorem we know that this a square minus 7 i minus 2 i uh, will be equal to 0 and which we can write uh, we can take this common here in in these first two terms uh, this a. So, a into uh, a minus this 7 the identity matrix will be introduced and is equal to this 2 i. And now, what we can do here we can multiply by a inverse again a point to be noted that we can multiply by the a inverse when the a inverse exists. So, up to now this is ok the Kelly Hamilton theorem says that every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation, but if we are now multiplying by uh, a inverse here. So, that is only possible when a inverse exists. So, we should not uh, do such calculations when a uh, do inverse does not exist. So, we should verify first whether a inverse exists or not in this case naturally it exists. So, here we uh, multiply then by a inverse and what we will get the right hand side will be a inverse and this 2 we can divide here. So, we will get 1 by 2 a minus 7 i that should be the a inverse. So, very uh, easily we uh, got this a inverse here. So, we need to do just a uh, simple calculations to get this uh, a inverse a minus this 7 times i. So, that is the value of this uh, a inverse using the Kelly Hamilton theorem. So, coming to the conclusion what we have uh, done here we have studied we have introduced the eigenvalues and eigenvector and uh, basically this equation was very important this a x is equal to lambda x this lambda is the eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector uh, will be given by x. And we have also studied this Kelly Hamilton theorem which says that every square matrix satisfies its uh, own characteristic equation. So, here the right hand side this is a 0 matrix. So, the same order having all the entries 0 and these are the references used uh, for this for preparing these lectures and thank you very much for your attention.